Good afternoon, everybody. Hope you're having a fine day. Today, we just came back from a three-day break of thinking of fun recipes we could be doing. And today, we're going to be making biscottis. All right. Thank you, Zachary. So here we are again. Uh, this is our fifth video after being in the COVID-19 uh, stay home, uh, sheltering in place. We hope everyone is doing well. Uh, so we, as Zach said, we took a few days uh, thinking, hey, what would be fun to make? We looked at recipes and we come up with biscotti. So as every recipe that uh, we do, we want to make sure that you see the finished product. Uh, so we make some ahead of time. And here is what the biscotti looks like before you cut it. And with that, we have cut some. So go ahead, Zachary, help me. Uh, we are going to, so those are the slices that we make. They're about three quarter of an inch thick and you simply cut it kind of in diagonal and you put it on a cookie tray with a piece of uh, parchment paper to make sure it doesn't stick. And then we're going to put it back in the oven and we cook some more um, while Zach is the putting it down. And so as you see, I use a, a bread knife, but I just push down. I don't need to make a cutting motion. I just push down and they cut nicely. Here, oh, let me see it right there. Thank you. So I don't cut your fingers. Hopefully not. We need all 10 of them to make all those recipes. So let's be careful. All right, so we have the oven at about 350, 375 degrees. And so we baked the biscotti first and now we're about to put the slices uh, to dry in the oven so we're running out of space here here we put the corners like that yeah, right. if you turn it around you have more space here we go we got it right. good job okay just a few more yeah let you finish i'm going to open the oven so, when they, so again, all those recipes you can do without the wood fire oven. We did it for the fun of the wood fire oven, but this oven, no flame. Uh, there's a lot of sugar in here. It, will, it would burn in a hot bed. So if you, uh, no flame, just the residual heat from the oven. If not, set your home oven at 350 degrees. Okay, so, sorry, let me show you. Oh, try to not drop them. They look good. We just want to color them a little bit more in the slides. And dry them. <coughs> and dry them at the same time. So, uh, set a timer, how many? Let's do five minutes just to see how it looks, make sure we don't burn anything. Yeah. All right, so, good. So, is the timer giving you trouble? Yeah. If no, we can ask Siri to do it. Okay. Okay, we're good, so do you so, have the recipe? Yes. Great. And now we will be making the biscotti so what Dough. do you need? So today we will be making half a recipe because we already made one full of a recipe. So for a full recipe, you'll need three cups of flour, one and a half cups of sugar, one flour, teaspoon sugar. of baking powder, one eighth of a teaspoon of salt or a pinch of salt, a teaspoon of vanilla extract, a teaspoon of almond extract, four eggs, two cups of roasted and non-salted almonds or any other nuts you you want to use so first you will start by beating your eggs and your sugar so you can crack the eggs directly into the the container or you can crack them into another container but zach is really skilled he has been making pancakes by himself since he's five years old. So again, he has had a lot of training. Oh, As he said shell. that, he drops a shell. There we go. <laughs> so it's extra crunchy. He can feel it in the biscotti. So then you mix it until it starts to... Okay. So is there a way to beat it or you just whisk it like that? You just whisk it. Just whisk it. 
when you do a lot of pastries, often you see recipes, they say, beat your eggs with uh, the sugar until it become, becomes kind of a white mixture. Uh, and so it's exactly what Zach is doing. As you introduce more air, your mixture is going to turn kind of a, of a white, so pale color. So here it is starting to turn in a yellowish, whitish color. Okay. Then we will add our almond extract to give it the almondy taste. Right. And our vanilla extract to give it the extra taste. Okay. And then you beat it some more to mix it all in very good. And what else? We have the optional. And today you can. Uh, we're going to add some. Uh, some orange flower. I meant orange flower water. It's optional. We're just adding it to have extra flavory taste. So again, we picked some recipes and I will go in detail uh, further about that recipe, but we picked it uh, with the idea of using strictly what we have into the cabinet. So, you know, we are doing well, you know, we are not out of anything. We have flour, we have eggs, we had some almonds and other nuts, vanilla, almond flavor, and we have orange flour that we have brought back from Europe. So that was perfect to add to the recipe. So now we will add all our dry ingredients, or most of them. Mm -hmm. So first we're going to add our, our flour. So here we go. And then we will add our baking powder. And then we will add our salt. And then we will mix that. You mix all your dry ingredients. And then you can add your nuts. Okay, so what do we have in those nuts? We have almond that we roasted. And then we have some pumpkin seeds. Pumpkin seeds that we roasted as well. And we have some uh, walnuts. Those are not rust roasted, but we had some, so we thought we'll use it. And uh, then we else? also have some raisins okay. if you like those. Oh, are those optional or mandatory? Those are optional. Oh yeah? Some people don't like raisins? Yes. Oh, okay. Some people like Zachary. So I like raisins. So first batch we made, no raisins. Uh, that was the deal. Uh, but this one uh, has raisins. I guess I would be the only one eating it. So, oops. Uh, so you mix everything. Does that look good? Yes. Right. So, and then now you add both um, both add both of them together. So you remove your whisk or you keep it? Well, you remove it. Okay. Here, and then it you can use, you know, like the bread, you can use an electric mixer or your hands. Right. Are you using your hands? Yes. Oh, wow. Zach has been doing all the mixing, so he shows, uh, he makes it look like it's easy. So what did you tell me earlier? You said if I put the liquid on top of what? The dry ingredient, uh -huh. um, my hands get dirtier, uh -huh. but if I put the dry ingredients on top of the liquid, my hands get less dirty. Okay, perfect. I hope. You hope, all right, so we'll see. So while you mix, I'm going to explain the story uh, behind that recipe. So, Zach, where did we go for Christmas? We went to Italy. All right, so we were really fortunate. We were able to take a trip to Italy. Uh, we had a lot of fantastic food, and some of them were uh, biscotted. And we loved it, and at this uh, weekend we're looking... Oh, time's up. Time is up, or I'm going to check on that. All right, so it's just starting to color a little bit. It's doing good. I'm putting it back just to make sure um, it keeps coloring. So I was saying we went to Italy, loved the biscotti. This weekend we're looking through recipes. What can we do that we have on hand doesn't require a trip um, to the store? So. We're actually were looking at different cookbooks. One of them was a Moroccan cookbook, had tons of recipes, uh, and we came across something that is called fakas. It's spelled F-A-K-K-A-S. Uh, and when we looked at it, the picture looked beautiful. We looked at the ingredients, we're like, fantastic. We have everything, flour, eggs, sugar, uh, almond. They say you can use any type of uh, nuts. But they say if you don't have almonds, then you can use uh, sesame seeds, you can use walnuts, you can use anything you have on hand, we're like, that's perfect. And as we looked at it, we're like, wait, this is just like biscotti. So then we looked at the biscotti recipe and we're like, okay, that's perfect. We can call it pretty much anything we want. That's pretty much biscotti. 
And what is fantastic is that you can put in it just what you have. So uh, that made it extremely convenient for our recipe and selection for today. And this is starting to get the... It's coming together? Yes. So okay, now good. we're going to do, like when we make baguettes, we're going to take them out uh -huh. and roll them on the table with some flour. Okay, so I'm, we have some flour ready. So what do you, what do you use to clean your hands a little bit? So we have a, a, scraper. a scraper or other. You could also use a spoon okay. or the back of a knife. Back of a knife or a better knife that is not sharp because yeah, it really gets to your hands just like when you do pizza dough or any type of dough. So just scrape it up the best you can and then you try, you try to scrape the bowl so it comes together. We make some room so we can see better. So I got the best I could and now... now okay, so I'm going to put a little bit of flour on the countertop because it gets really sticky. All right, let me help you a little bit. Okay, so this will make one, right? Yes, because we only made half of the okay. recipe. Okay, so. Are you ready for it? Yes. Okay. okay. Go ahead, so start rolling it gently, and I'm going to put more flour as you roll. All right, now then, just a little bit, and start it to stick. Okay. Let me scrape that. Yeah, so if you get, the more you have on your countertop, the more it's going to stick. So if you feel like it's sticking, just a little bit more flour, and that's going to do the trick. All right, this one looks pretty good, right? What do you think? Yep. Yeah, so hold on. Let me grab the pan. Okay, so we're going to put it on the tray. Let's do it together so we don't break three, it. One, two, two, three, go. All right, perfect. So let's put it sideways, because it's a big one. Okay, so we use parchment paper on a cookie tray just to make sure it doesn't stick. You can also put a little bit of oil inside the cookie tray uh, and that's pretty much it. And Zach likes to lick his finger because he tried it earlier without cooking anything and he said, oh wow, this is amazing. So I've been trying to keep it off, uh, keep him off from eating it so we have some left for the video. So I'm going to put that in the oven. This one started to follow nicely. I'm going to bring it closer to the to the camera. I hope you can see it well. It has a nice little defined color, and inside it's nice and dry. So, uh, Zach, what are we going to eat that with? I don't yeah. know. You want a cup of coffee or a cup of tea? Both. Both. Mm -hmm. All right. So we'll probably have that uh, for a little uh, snack around four o'clock. How do we call that in French? We call that a 4 heures. So 4 heures is 4 o'clock in French. So that's typically when the kids and the adults too uh, usually have a little snack. So this is great for use a cup of coffee, cup of tea, and then we'll uh, hopefully have some enough to bring it home. So uh, Zach's mom and uh, his brother get to enjoy it as well. So hopefully we'll be back tomorrow. If you guys again have any questions, uh, feel free to send us an email. If you go to breadstoneovens.com, on the contact page, there is a form you can fill out. If not, you can send me an email, info at breadstoneovens.com. And I just posted that recipe about, let's say, 20 minutes ago. So you can go to our blog, breadstoneovens.com, and then click on the blog at the bottom of the main page. You have that recipe, and I will be adding pictures. Uh, again, I appreciate all the people who follow us, all the likes on Facebook, uh, all the questions that we've been getting, I need to regroup them and on a video kind of answer all the questions that we have been uh, receiving. Uh, but again, thanks for following us. Everybody stay safe. We'll keep working on some more, more recipes that you can do at home pretty much with what you have without having to make a trip to the store. So thanks for watching and uh, see you tomorrow. Bye.